What is up, compassionate and proactive parents and any teachers and therapists who are here to learn how to support kids with executive function challenges. Today, I'm going to talk about the 13 executive functions. My name is Seth Perler with executivefunctionsummit.com. We're here with 10 days to TFOS from World on day three, where I'm going to teach you about the 13 uh, executive functions. And in the, um, in the interest of time, I'm talking rather quickly, but I'm going to go through the 13 executive functions and why this is important. So to start with today, oh, first of all, by the way, if you like what we're doing, please share executivefunctionsummit.com. This is our site here. You can take the URL and share it with people so they can find us as well. They can check out the speakers and sign up for free. And if you're interested in the All Access Pass and any sales on that, check out the All Access Pass page here. So um, we're gonna talk about these 13 executive functions. And as I said, I'm gonna go through these rather quickly. First thing to know is that there is not agreement within all of the experts. Uh, obviously, in the summit, I interview tons of experts. We talk about the different definitions of executive function according to them during the summit. I ask them, how would you define executive function to a parent who's brand new to it? And you'll hear 40 or 50 different experts talking about uh, their definition of it. And I'm going to tell you my definition of it, but we don't all agree on a definition and we don't all agree on the aspect. So first of all, I'm going to tell you that as far as the definition, usually most experts have like an overarching definition. This is what executive function is. And the way that I define it in simple terms is, is how the brain helps us get things done, how we execute tasks. And the problem is, is when we have trouble to execute tasks. But then underneath that, different experts will say there are five main executive functions. There are eight, there are 10, there are three. I talk about 13. The reason I talk about 13 and not, and I don't do it the way that other experts do it is because I do this in the language that I've heard hundreds or thousands of parents over many years talk about these things. So I try to make it very relatable. So here we go with aspect number one, executive function number one. Executive function number one is planning. So the brain has skills. Executive function skills are skill sets. The brain has skill sets that help us to plan. We can do short-term planning, daily planning, long-term planning, planning for college, planning for retirement, planning for dinner tonight, planning for what to get at the grocery store. We plan. Our kids can plan when they're going to do their homework, hang out with their friends, what they want to do after school, what they want to do during the summer. But our kids need to develop skill sets around planning if they are to have strong executive functions so that they can accomplish their goals in life. So planning skills is the first one that I identify as an executive function skill. Number two is organization, organizing things, having homes for things, having methods of getting systems and structures in place so that you can make sense of everything um, and accomplish your goals. So organization is executive function number two, according to Seth's brain. And number three is prioritization. And this is one that I personally have executive function challenges myself, and I really struggle with this particular one. It's very hard for me. It is prioritization skills. How do we prioritize the more important thing when it matters over the fun, easy, preferable thing? Okay, we wanna do fun, easy, preferable things in life. That is awesome. But there's a time and a place to prioritize the important things. How do we prioritize those? The brain, the prefrontal cortex, the frontal lobe, uh, helps us, the, the, where executive function takes place, helps us build skill sets to prioritize things. Number four is, you could use different words for this. You could say focus, attention, concentration the opposite of it would be unfocused not paying attention distracted distractible not concentrating so the brain the frontal prefrontal cortex helps us to focus on a task through to completion and it helps us stay focused and eliminate distractions uh, so that we can focus. For example, I want to focus on what I'm doing right now. I have my notes in front of me so I can look at them as I'm going. And I also have my phone turned off so that I can focus. So focus, how, what skills, these are many skill set, skills, uh, what skills do we develop to help us focus? Next, number five is inhibitory skills or holding back or refraining or biting your tongue. There are many ways to say inhibitory skills, but basically inhibiting from getting distracted, from getting off task, from doing something that's not appropriate in the moment, the brain helps us to inhibit things. So there might be a squirrel that's very distracting, but I might inhibit myself from paying attention to that right now because I'm trying to focus on something else. Obviously, inhibition and focus go hand, they're kind of two sides of the same coin. Um, also, hyperactivity, if you think of that word, that's like a lack of inhibition. Impulsivity, that's like a lack of inhibition. So, 
that next one is inhibition. Number six is task initiation skills, skills that we use to help us get started or quote motivated when we don't feel like it. Number seven is task persistence. Once we've started something, can we stay on track? Can we finish it? Can we keep going? So to task persistence, can we, if we feel bored, ignore the feeling of being bored and just can press on and move through that? Do we have skills around how to do that? The next one, and, and task completion. So task persistence also goes into task completion. Can we finish what we start? Do we put our name on our homework? Do we turn, actually turn it in when it's done? Things like that. Number eight is transition skills. So this is the flexibility to be able to transition from one situation to another. So for example, we might transition from a class to the locker to our next class. Can we transition, get everything we need, be prepared for the next class? Can we transition in the morning from getting out of bed, getting ready from school, getting on the bus and getting to school? Those are all different transitions. Can we transition from middle to school to high school? Can we transition from, um, if we move from city to city, can we make a transition in that way? That's a very large transition. But can we make these transitions in life? And number nine is working memory skills. So working memory has to do with how our brain keeps little bits of information in our mind for uh, a few moments at a time. So if I were to ask you a question like this, what's 163 plus 52? You would have to be tracking. Wait, what did he say? Do I need to rewind it? What were those numbers? So, and if you're the type of person who decomposes numbers well, you probably already have the answer in your head. Um, but 163 plus 52 is 215, I think. But are we able to, and that is uh, an executive function skill. I can use working memory sometimes, especially if I'm interested in it, but that is a skill set to build skills around. Can we keep bits of information in our head? Hey, go to your bedroom, grab A, B, and C, and let's get in the car and take off. You know, if your kid is playing Legos 10 minutes later and you're like, where's the three things? You know, because the working memory didn't stay focused on that thing. So anyhow, that's working memory. Number 10 is emotional regulation skills. This is very complex, but how the nervous system helps us regulate emotions, uh, those are executive function skills as well. So do we have those skill sets to regulate emotions in healthy, positive ways? Number 11 is metacognitive skills, skills around being reflective and introspective and self aware aware and questioning if things are working or not for us and are we reflecting in a healthy positive way to grow from experiences number 12 is skills to move through resistance now these are my terms you won't find other experts necessarily using this but i put this as an executive function because the main problem with executive function is when we're resistant i don't feel like it i don't want it it's not fun i don't prefer it it's it's too hard it's too challenging it's boring, whatever. Do we have skills to move through the resistance, the procrastination, the lack of motivation? Do we have skills to move through our resistance that holds us back and say, you know what? I may not feel like doing this right now, but this is an important thing in my life and I have skills to be able to get this important thing done. One that, you know, that I talk about all the time is like doing taxes. It makes my head spin. It's very difficult for me. Uh, it takes me, it's tedious. It takes so long. I have a lot of resistance around that but I have skills to move through that resistance so that I can do that. Now, number 13 is self-care skills. Now, these are not necessarily executive functions, but it requires a lot of executive function for the different types of self-care to take care of our body, our mind, our spirit, our relationships, our self-care, whatever that might mean in your life, our nutrition, our sleep self-care now one uh sort of bonus one that i talk about a lot this would be number 14 again is not an executive function skill but i'll often lump it in here is the self-advocacy advocacy skill sets because self-advocacy is so important anyhow those are the executive function skills that seth talks about there's a little primer for you i hope that's helpful for you don't have to take notes on all of this but that is what the brain helps us do to get things done and if you like what we're doing here at executive function summit you know we start uh, August 11th. You can check out the speakers here. And if you like what we're doing, you can share our page here, executivefunctionsummit.com. And you can also check out the All Access Pass and see if that's something you're interested in. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you tomorrow with number four.